Welcome, Mikola Gnitovsky. You are president of the CPT, the Committee for the Prevention of Torture, and you've just issued your annual report for 2017. 18 visits, is that more or, or less than in previous years? Well, this is generally uh, the normal number of visits. 18 visits, 10 ad, uh, periodic visits and 8 ad hoc visits, meaning that uh, in 10 cases we announced our general intention of carrying out a visit to a country one year before. And then, of course, the exact dates were notified much, much later, just before the visit. And in eight cases, we went to particular countries to follow certain topics uh, or to sometimes react to the developments in the country. For example, we went to see the situation with immigration detention to like Italy and Hungary. We went to see how persons were treated by the police to Serbia and Azerbaijan and so on and so forth. So you've covered a wide range of situations in which people are detained. Uh, uh, deprived of their liberty. Exactly. And your general conclusions were that uh, you needed more effective complaints mechanisms or at least greater access to effective complaint mechanisms for detainees. Why did you, why did you pick that as the main point of your report? Well, this is actually uh, the so-called substantive section of the report. So whenever we come to uh, countries, we see that what the situation is and then we draw some conclusions. And uh, we have uh, long ago came to the conclusion that uh, an efficient uh, complaints mechanism is needed uh, for any persons who are deprived of their liberty, be it police station or a prison or a psychiatric hospital or a migrant's facility. It is not the main thing, but it is an important element of preventing ill-treatment and of also of normalizing atmosphere at such uh, places. But is it not the case that all institutions have some kind of complaints well, procedure? Most of them have some kind of complaints procedure. Some of them even don't have any complaints procedure. For example, when we went to Italy to see the immigration detention, uh, the situation in Lampedusa and other places, we found out that actually there were no effective complaints mechanisms available, unlike, for example, Italian prisons where such complaints exist and function very well. Uh, in uh, most countries, you are right, and in most places there are such mechanisms, but it doesn't mean that they are necessarily efficient or that there is trust of the detained persons uh, in those mechanisms, because in some places the detainees can simply fear uh, to uh, complain because uh, they must, m might think that any complaint might actually exacerbate their situation. And obviously you are the Committee for the Prevention of Torture, hum Inhumane and Degrading Treatment. Are you good at what you do? Are you actually preventing torture? Well, uh, according to the recent studies, uh, we do uh, prevent torture and torture prevention work is generally efficient. There was an excellent study carried out by Professor uh, Richard Carver and Lisa Headley that actually proved that the main aspects to which the CPT pays attention in its monitoring visits regarding the prevention of torture, they actually work. And, and what would those be? What would those main aspects be? For example, uh, uh, the most efficient ones when it comes to prevention of ill-treatment by police and other law enforcement agencies would be the existence of the so-called fundamental safeguards, that is access to a lawyer, access to a doctor, information on rights, that is notification of, of a third person of the facts of one's detention. So these things really work. And actually such aspect as complaints, this is also part of this big, big picture. When it functions well, then it also has a useful role in prevention of ill-treatment. And as you visit uh, places of detention, are you seeing that uh, the institutions are increasingly implementing your standards or is there still a lot of work to be done? Generally, yes, but, but again, uh, of course, there's, there's lots of work to be done uh, in many respects because still many countries uh, have don't, don't uh, have uh, the professional police force which would use the uh, modern scientific methods and also the uh, modern methods of interviewing persons, but in, uh, they're still, like in the you know, in, in medieval times, they would still be uh, confession-oriented, uh, and, and that leads to a lot of ill-treatment, and they wouldn't have any forensic, uh, let's say, technology available to them, which also leads to ill-treatment. Uh, in prisons, um, countries can't cope with overcrowding. It is still a very serious problem in Europe. Mm -hmm. In immigration detention, there are problems with the influx of migrants and uh, just uh, impossibility to accommodate them properly. In psychiatry, there are still a lot of old-fashioned ideas which actually prevent uh, uh, the states from organizing the system in a way that it uh, does not uh, leave any room for ill treatment. So there's still lots of work to do, of course. And whose responsibility is it to make sure that the standards are actually applied and respected? Well, this is the international obligation of the state. So in, in principle, it is the authorities whom we talk to and the government. And that's why we feel it necessary to speak more directly with the government and with the 
the even with the political leadership of the states. That that's why, for example, last year we have had uh, five separate high-level talks outside of the context of visits because we also do it, of course, uh, when we go to uh, to a country with a visit. We even met with prime ministers and you know with political leaders of the country to make the dialogue really intensive and to obtain the level of commitment, serious political commitment of those persons to uh, implement the recommendations of the CPT. And are you hopeful that uh, things are on a, an upward trend? Well, we're hopeful uh, that uh, uh, we are understood by our interlocutors. We have uh, rather good ongoing dialogue with the vast majority of European states, so we are fairly positive. Nevertheless, of course, there is no room for complacency whatsoever.